everybody. This is Lisa Asklesi Inventress, the CEO and founder of Inventing A to Z. And here we are today on my podcast, the Inventress Podcast, and super excited to introduce you to my friend, a great guest, phenomenal woman, executive producer, executive producer, and producer and producer. <laughs> my good friend, executive producer of Here and Now, ABC with Sandra Bookman. But there's a lot more to share. Executive producer, producer, producer. Tracy Washington Bagley. Hi. Hey, how are you? Uh, nice to see you, Lisa. And nice it's, to be here. It's nice to have you here. I am so excited to talk about all of the things you're doing. Um, first and foremost, I want to talk about the fact that you are the executive producer for the show here and now on ABC television with Sandra Bookman and have been for, I don't even, how many years is it, Tracy? So now we're up to 13 years. Uh, and before that, I was producing Like It Is, which was legendary, uh, focused on communities of color. The show Like It Is with Gil Noble grew right. out of the civil rights era. So it was on since 67. Mm -hmm. I wasn't producing it then, but I did get to produce with Gil for 10 years prior to here and now in 2011 with my girl, Sandra Brooklyn. And what an amazing job you have done all through the years. And just, Thank you know, you. even hired my daughter, Gianna, years ago. Yeah, that was as great. As an intern, as an intern. Yeah, now, many, many years later, she's a mommy with twins and the whole thing. And, and yeah. all of But Tracy, I and, and you are doing other things. You have produced your own movie. And that's Nico Newark, right? Yes. So I got a chance to direct. Um, it was just a labor of love. I always wanted to direct a movie, couldn't figure out how that would ever happen. Um, but my good friend and publicist who's been bugging me for years with clients to get on a show, I love him dearly, Angelo Ellerby, oh, gave me a call yep, and said, Tracy, um, I know some people that are pulling together a short film. Would you like to direct? I'm like, I've always wanted to direct. What's it about? So he said, it's about the Newark uh, riots, but it's a story, a kid story, um, based on a kid story, um, Nico, who grew up in a diner and he becomes friends with, he's uh, Greek and Puerto Rican, but he becomes friends with an African-American kid. And this is in the midst of the rioting that was going on in Newark. So there was really a race riot. Mm -hmm. um, and so I took a look at the script. And the rest is history. It was just fun, fun, fun. And at the same time, um, really took me out of my comfort zone somewhat. Yeah, but you and I talked a long time ago. And I remember you saying that it was a dream of yours. And I think you did mention it to your mom. May she rest in peace, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Said, you yep. One of these days, I am going to direct a movie. Yes, I told her that in a movie theater. It was the weirdest thing because she used to always like to read the credits and so did my dad. Matter of fact, that's how I learned to read. Um, my dad and I used to watch shows when I was about four or five. And at the end, he would make me read the, the names on the credit roll. And so my family, we were always watching credits, never knowing that one day my name would be in, you know, on a credit roll. But anyway, we're in a theater and my mom's standing there watching a the credit roll. And I told her, I said, Mom, one day I'm going to direct a movie and I'm going to have Steve Rogolinski, who was my editor at the time at ABC in Philadelphia, WPVI. Um, I'm going to have uh, Steve and Joel Schwartzberg, my other brother in, in work. Um, he'll shoot it. And it all came to, to, to pass. It really happened. So it was crazy. And were those guys involved with the production as well? So Joel didn't get a chance to shoot because he was working on a different project, but Steve did edit the movie. <laughs> it's just, and this is like 30 years later. Unreal. So you put so, it out there and it's stuck. It just, it happens. You can't hide from it. I was telling somebody that earlier. When you speak something into existence and you really want it to happen, mm -hmm. and it's a part of who you are. You know, I believe that this has been designated to you for many, many years. It was yours from the very beginning mm -hmm. and you knew what was happening from meeting Joel to your other, you know, your, the right. other producers. Steve, right. And Steve, Joel and Steve. And here you are, here you yeah. are actually doing it. Yeah. Now, and reading the credits, I love that. You know, our parents have a way of teaching us without telling yeah. us, educating us, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love that too. 
So yeah. Tracy, I want to go and I want to ask you about the film. I don't want to leave that yet. Mm -hmm. I can't, mm -hmm. This is so funny. It's such a small world. Angelo Ellerby and myself are friends. We were just at the book signing and I, I saw mm -hmm. you in some pictures. I did not know Angelo Ellerby was the one who offered you the script. Yes, he is the reason oh, that I got that opportunity. And he used to call me when I was producing Like It Is and he would pitch a story, you know, a guest. And Gil Noble was very meticulous about who was on his show. And for the most part, they were repeat guests. And he was really reluctant to bring in new people. And so I think I talked to Angelo for a good 10 years. And I'd always say, well, I'll try. I'll pass you along to Gil. And he could never get anybody on the show. And then once I took on uh, Here and Now, you know, Gil Noble unfortunately passed away. And then the sky was the limit. And uh, Angelo and I have been like, you know, almost like brothers and sisters. Yeah, zero idea. <laughs> it's crazy. Small circle, I didn't, I had no idea, but that's yeah, funny. Yeah. Angela's amazing. And just to, you know, to talk about him for a second, are you going to be in Newark? Because they're naming a street after him next week. I know. Yes, I, I plan to be there. <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> it is crazy. Circle. So I, I want to talk about where you are with this film now. What's happening? Is it being funded? Tell me what's 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 the next step? So we've been in a few um, film festivals. We were in the Greek International Film Festival. Um, we got accepted to the Newark Film Festival, but it's my understanding that they're kind of putting things on hold a little bit. So they're going virtual. But next year will actually be a part of the selective films and you can go see it in person. So <laughs> that's exciting. Um, I know that the producer, um, Nick, Despis, Despis, oh God, can you edit this? Oh. <laughs> Desp I forgot how to say his last name. Anyway, the producer um, just submitted the film to Sundance Film, so who knows? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. man. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to... Deciprius, Nick Deciprius. So, so dreams do come true, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Dreams do come true. Now, I want to ask you, so when growing up, was this always a passion of yours? I mean, because you've been in television for, for so many years. Well, it sounds crazy, but I'm going to tell it anyway. I remember being in my bedroom and I was probably about six. And I said to myself, I'm going to be famous one day. Now, I don't consider myself famous, but it was I just- I you famous. It's a weird I thing. I Thank you. I said, I'm, I want to be famous. And so there was that. And then I was always the kid that asked a lot of questions. Like my mother said, I was on the bus with her and she, I was about three and I asked so many questions and she said, this is the last question. And she said, this little old lady said, I'm sorry, but that's not the way she's smart. She's inquisitive and you have to let her ask questions. So my mother said it would it was so bad that I would answer my own questions. I would ask a question, then I would answer it. And it, it drove them crazy. And even as I got older, they're like, oh God, here comes Tracy with her questions. And then I always, when I visited my grandparents, um, I kept a little like, it was like a little reporter's um pad. And it had a little drawer where they kept it for me every time I would visit. And I'd sit there and write and write and write and write and write. So I didn't know I was going to become a journalist or a producer, but I guess all of that was, you know, just budding in me. And um, part of it is my mother was a New York City school teacher at Lafayette High School for 30 years in Brooklyn. Wow. And she taught me how to write. And I was in Catholic school and she'd, you know, say, you got to redo that. You have smudges, has to be neat. And she'd tear up the papers. I had to write them again. So there's that side of me. And then my dad, um, he was a salesman, but, you know, for his hobbies, he was a photographer. And again, I was very young and he would set up a dark room and I'd watch him open the film, put it in the trays and it would, you know, appear. I thought he was a magician. So, <laughs> so we did the photography together and then he loved, my dad loved, loved, loved music. My mom too, but my father was really into like jazz and then R&B and and he'd make me sit and listen to different, you know, artists. But at the same time, when he bought new um, stereo equipment, as they called it then, Back then yeah. he made a point of teaching me how to connect everything. So 
This is the red side of the wire. This is the black. This is how you hook up the speakers. And my mother would say, she doesn't need to know that. Um, and then he had speakers all over the house. We had like a control room almost where there was a music in the garage, music in the bathroom, music in the basement. And he had little switches. And so it was like different zones. So now that I think about it, it was like the combination of the two of them. It was. And my brother's an engineer here at Channel 7 too. So the combination of the two of them, it's like it, it was just they were planting the seeds and not even knowing it. That's right. That's yeah. right. The culmination, you, they they bred you to do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe they knew, maybe they didn't know. I mean, yeah, they, were they didn't know. They didn't know. Of course, they didn't know. They didn't know. They were feeding you too. I mean, the nice thing is you were so inquisitive as a child mm -hmm. and they had the opportunity to give you, feed mm -hmm. you information. What an incredible opportunity. What a blessing to have had parents like that, right? Yeah. And um, I talk about my parents a lot because they're not here anymore. And they were young parents. They had me at 16 and a half. My and they were so good at being parents that I used to tease them and say, you guys took that way too serious. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad they did. Right. Um, oh. But they were all about exposing my mom, particularly with entertainment she would take me to Broadway and just and I was you know dancing school and I got to sing and perform and all of that right and they were just so focused on being parents my dad wanted me to understand sports and make me watch football basketball he said I want you to be a woman that understands sports and not one that doesn't get it you know um so yes. I give a lot of credit to them they made you helped you to become multifaceted Right. which you are and it, all of it happens you know with what you're doing at work yep. in your independent business and your writing and your pro pro producing mm -hmm. it's absolutely amazing so i know people are out there listening and everybody is everybody's interested in television you know everybody i yep. don't know one person who doesn't love the mm -hmm. art of television how it's done mm -hmm. how it's created mm -hmm. so what would you say tracy to anyone who's trying to get into the world of producing television um, behind a camera, in front of a camera, writing, speaking, what would be your advice? Well, first and foremost, um, we'll, let's take a look at the, the way in which the industry is changing. A lot of young people don't watch television per se, mm -hmm. um, which has older people in the business a little concerned, but you know, I've always said, you know what, they, there's people are still looking for content. Even if you're on your phone or on an app, Someone has to create content. And what right. producers do is we're storytellers. So we go out, we find stories, whatever's of interest to us. You know, we like, we're like, okay, let's dig deeper. Let's ask the right questions and bring this story to someone. So even though younger generation may be getting their content differently, you still have to create content. I think that those that want to get into television or media, whatever we want to, however we want to phrase it, you mm -hmm. need to figure out, is it your passion to be in front of the camera or behind the camera? I think a lot of times um, there are some that'll say, it's not for me because they're thinking that the only avenue is to be on-air talent. I personally love the behind the scenes because I am I'm I feel like I'm um, more so from the creative side. Mm -hmm. Even though I was in news for four years at News 12 Long Island when it first launched in Woodbury, Long Island, mm -hmm. I love when I got introduced to long form television, which is where you get more than two minutes to feature or to tell a story and you're adding music and beautiful pictures. I was like, okay, I really like this. So mm -hmm. long form is more like a 2020, you know, mm -hmm. magazine show you're watching here and now. Um mm -hmm. You know, here and now is recorded in a studio. It's a weekly show, um, but it's not live. So we record it in a studio, and then I sit with an editor and say, okay, this is the feel I like for this segment. Let's add music. Here's some footage to make this, as we say, pop. So it'll be interesting. And I always feel like um, the most hmm, serious or bland story can be uh, more interesting if you 
if you give people the right feeling, right? So they feel like they have to watch something, You there's a hook, right? A reason why they need to stay with this particular story. Um, so it's really, it starts with where your passion is and you have to love this. You can't, this is not a feel where you can kind of sort of like it because <laughs> the hours can be long um, and um, it can be stressful because there are a lot of players. No one person can pull together a show. We're only as good as our editors, our photographers, our lighting people, our camera guys, our women, our directors. Like you need everybody, even an intern is just as important as the talent because in the end, we all come together to create this show or in film, this movie. And one piece can't happen without the other. Right. So you have to have the right team. Right. You're only, I always say, I love it, it's corny, but teamwork makes the dream work. You know what? Brittany can't stand when I say that, but it's, <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> don't, say, don't say that. I go, but it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. That's not, you can't pull all the pieces together. You can't. You I've said to an piece. intern, if you miss time something, if I ask you, how long was that sound bite, right? And you guess, because you don't want to tell me that you really didn't time it, that's going to trickle down to the control room. And then it's going to it's going to cause a problem for everyone. And if we're live, we would be in a lot of trouble because we wouldn't be able to get to a commercial break or we would step on a commercial break. Like all of it is important. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes and most people don't don't know any of it. It looks simple. It looks like, oh, you just sat right. there and you showed right. up, and your people showed right. up. You even you you even have to pull people in to your show. I mean, you've had right. the most fascinating people on your show, Tracy. Thank you. you so know? yeah, I'm often asked, well, what is a producer? I mean, I didn't know when I started, um, which I started in college, Ohio University. You know, go Bobcats. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, producing is really um, taking a show from A to Z. Mm -hmm. So it starts with an idea. You could be driving in your car, and you're like, ooh. I want to do a story on small businesses um, in, I don't know, Princeton, whatever, right? Okay, so it starts with an idea, but then you have to book guests, right? Who are you going to talk to? What stories are compelling? What stories are going to seem, uh, are, going to, are going to actually translate well visually, right? Because they might have a good story, but you don't have any video to back it up or whatever. So it's all these different moving parts. Um, and then you have to hope that whoever you speak to is going to be interesting. Um, and then your host has to introduce that person. So there's a script that needs to be written. I write the questions for the host. Um, and again, after everything is recorded, you sit with an editor. They piece it all together. Um, I skipped over the photographers and the lighting people. So oh there's God. just a lot that goes on behind the scenes. That's so interesting. And I, I've seen some of it and it's, it blows my mind. And, you know, and when you talk about putting all of these moving parts together, and I'm sure people come to you all the time and say, Tracy, can I be on your show? And, and, you know, everybody wants to be on television. Everybody wants to be on your show. But like you said, there are so many moving parts. And uh, although the, the person may be interesting, it may not, it may not be appropriate for what you're running that month. I do the same thing with, I explain the same thing with QVC and, and, and HSN and these shows. It's not that the person's product is not interesting, but it doesn't fit. It may not fit that program because there's so much and there's so much that goes into it. Mm -hmm. Find the effort and is it going to fit? You know, and right. I, it's so, so interesting. And I love that you're saying you're driving down the street and it, it hits you because that's the creative, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be able to, to be creative to build a show. Mm -hmm. Driving down Princeton, you see something or something hits mm -hmm. you that's the innovation and that's what that's what you know you you, you bring together as a right. phenomenal um right creative and well-produced well-produced right. show right so well right yeah, we go. thank so, you and what i try to teach uh interns particularly i say you know we could have a number of good stories but then when you sit down and you decide on a particular show where are these stories going to fall? So you have segments in a show. You have the opening segment before you go to commercial break. That's how we we pull together here and now. So it's coming up on here and now today, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And then you go to break. And so then you come back. 
So what's going to be that first story that's going to stop someone from grabbing this? All right. Uh -huh. and I'm not interested in that. So what's the hook? Why should they? There's so many different places to turn to apps, channel, whatever it is. Right. So I want them to feel like I cannot turn the channel or mm -hmm. I cannot close this app and move on to somewhere else, right? This is the this is very important, right? So it's how you stack the show. And then there's an emotion, there's a flow to it. So you don't want to take them from something really, really serious and then go to baking a pie, right? So right. you know, it there's there's a flow throughout the show. So there's um there's a, a skill set to that. It takes time to kind of figure that out. How do you train your interns? I mean, that's, that's, how do you, I love it. That's my favorite you know? part. Yeah. My favorite part. You're so good at it. You are so that's, good. at Thanks. That's my favorite part because nine times out of 10, they've been chosen because they're eager and mm -hmm. they have a good attitude mm -hmm. and um, they're, you know, they, they, they enjoy being around people. You, you can't be, I don't think a really good producer and be an introvert. Like you can be shy. I was always shy, right? But very inquisitive and I love people. Right. So, you know, I always tell them like, just throw the ideas out there. There are really no bad ideas. I mean, we right. may say, oh, that's not going to work, but just throw it up there and, and let's see. And so I, I teach them the mechanics of television because there's technical aspects, you know, we have a rundown um, on our computer system, which mm -hmm. each story and the script and the timing and all of that. So you got to be pretty good at math too. But, um, and then there's the other side of it. What makes a good interviewer, mm -hmm. right? So I taught them different things like, okay, when you sit down and you interview someone, do you want to hold up a, a, a pad, a, a reporter's pad and ask them questions? Or do you want to kind of put it to the side and take it away so that it feels more like a conversation and they, they feel more comfortable with you? It's more like two friends talking. So it depends on are you covering a fire or are you trying to you getting, you know, you want somebody to tell their life story. Right. So there's there's a skill set with that. And it really just comes with practice. Now, do they interview? So you have these interviews, uh, the, the interns. So when they're bringing in a, a speaker, I see you have Oprah Winfrey behind mm -hmm. you. you there's <laughs> nobody, my, you have, there's my nobody idol. you haven't nobody you haven't spoken with and had on your show and, and interviewed. It's absolutely amazing to me. And I um, wish I had heard of it, not yet. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. I met you her, know. but I didn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, you have had the most oh, interesting yeah. people on your show, mm -hmm. and you're so cool. You're so cool about it because I've seen you in action. It, you know, so wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you two questions. So the interns and training them to ask questions, and on the other hand, how are you cool when you have Blair Underwood? <laughs> how dense? How do you keep it together? Because they come to you first. They're 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 meeting Tracy first. Yeah, I um. Oh, that's the other. That's the other hidden secret. A lot of people don't know. Um. A lot of times the hosts, they, especially if, if it's a show where you go into the field, the producers are the ones that do the interview and then the host will, you know, put their, what we call their track, their voice on a story, but they actually didn't do the interview. So that's the fun part. Um, I think I've interviewed Denzel uh, Washington three times, um, yeah. but you have to, I just finished talking to my new intern, Chelsea, about keeping your cool and she's been doing well. <laughs> Because I said, you know, you you have to just say to yourself, okay, they're human, but I'm here to do a job. And so, you know, you it, it's difficult, but they they do really well. Um, they just do. It's it's weird. But I give them an opportunity a lot of times to do what we call pre-interviews. So they'll set up a Zoom or a phone call and they're transcribing the interview so that I'm better prepared, and then the host is better prepared, getting more information. And that really helps them sharpen their interviewing skills. Yeah, you know, you you really nailed it um, when you said, number one, bringing interns in who are excited and are determined, right? Mm -hmm. And people can follow your lead. And then you teach them that these are, they are just people. They're people and, mm -hmm. and um, 
you know, everybody's really, everybody wants the same thing, right? We all want the same thing. We want love. We want to, you know, especially right. have the attention and everything. Right. So, I mean, I love it. I love it. And it's so interesting. It's so interesting every single time I speak with you to just, and I love picking your brain and finding out what you're doing. <laughs> I love it. I it's Sometimes it's empty, but. <laughs> no, it's never empty. It's always, it's so, there's always something going on there. You're always thinking between your puppy and. Reese you know, Peanut. Yes. Oh, so cute. Yes. Reese Peanut. It, she makes me happy because, you know, this is also stressful at times and at least I can go home. And I think we all need that. Like, you know, how do you, how do you de-stress? Um, yes and kind of separate yourself i drive my daughter crazy because all her life she's only known you know television and me coming home and saying oh yeah she never let me forget that you know i was producing houston medical which was a trauma series and i told her you know don't just jump on a golf car cart with someone just because it looks like fun because a little girl you know the golf cart rolled over her head and and danielle you know she's got dark humor so the girl was okay but she she's like mom you see how you raised me i had to hear about the little girl with the golf cart that rolled over her head and i said i know and i'm always telling you put the seatbelt on because in news i saw bad accidents and i won't let anybody in my car without putting on their seatbelt they if you don't wear a seatbelt you have to get out because i covered way too many fatal accidents as a, a production assistant, sound tech, ENG truck operator for News 12. I was like, everybody's wearing a seatbelt. And then when I started producing Houston Medical and a trauma center, they bring patients. I did not know patients. you were that show. Oh, yeah. And, and whenever the EMT, you know, person would say unrestrained mm -hmm. driver or passenger, they were always in bad shape. When they would say restrained mm -hmm. driver, passenger, they're talking and they might be hurting a little. And I said, nope, I don't care. Even in the back, because people will say, I don't wear a seatbelt in the back. I'm like, so this, this career of mine is also life-changing because I also saw miracles. You know, um, I watched doctors remove this one girl was at a party, teenager, someone's playing with a gun and she's, you know, in the operating room getting brain surgery and three months later, you know, she's in college and starting her freshman year. And I'm like, okay, that was a miracle. So my God, it's life changing, but it's work. But at the same time, you know, sometimes the crew and I, photographer, sound person, production assistant, we're in a trauma center and there are really bad things going on and you have to still stay focused yes. and get your story the other side of that was I would have to go to a family member as the person's being brought in from the, you know, uh, medevac or whatever, and say, we're a television crew. We're working on a series. We'd like to follow your loved one. And they're looking at you like, are you serious? Right. Like, I'm in the midst of my worst nightmare. Right. But a lot of times, well, first of all, it's the way you approach someone. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they knew... Oh, if there's cameras there, mm -hmm. maybe my loved one will get better care. So it kind of worked, right? Oh, you know what? That's a good point. So, but but I had to have the the nerve to ask, right? Do you mind if we follow you? And then what would happen? I became a part of those families because mm -hmm. I got attached to them because I'm still human, not just a right, producer, of course. right? Um, and so that was a beautiful part of it. And it was a tough part too, because when people lost a loved one, that was hard. Yeah. So you've been through it. You know, you, you've been <laughs> through the gamut in television, Watch, seeing everything, seeing the trauma, seeing the good times, seeing the miracles. What a blessing, Tracy. What a blessing. And, and then there's fun times. You know, I grew up watching um, the Jackson 5 and I even, this is funny. I even created my own girl group that was the Jackson Five, and we used to have rehearsals. And I told them that they couldn't perform; we weren't going to be able to perform certain songs unless we got permission because we weren't allowed. And I was like, I guess I understood some kind of copywriting, but anyway, really? long story short. Back then, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> my friends it. laugh about it. I was we were like the Jacksons, and I kept saying we got to write to someone and get permission to perform these songs. But anyway. A few years ago, I got a chance to meet the Jacksons 
unfortunately not Michael, but it was the MJ, the musical. And I was at a private event and I spent like an hour with them at the party. And I met Michael Jackson's son, Prince. And oh. I couldn't believe I was standing there with Marlon and Jackie. And I met Tito. And I'm like, is this what? real? Like, this is, re is this really happening? So there's so many times that I pinch myself because I'm like, wow, this is really happening. And that's the great, that's the wonder, wonderful side of this, you know? Oh my gosh, Tracy. The yeah. Jackson Five, that was just a dream. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I went to Madison Square Garden to see the Jackson Five went and they were performing with, uh, openers were Ohio players. The Ohio right. players opened for the Jackson Five. Mm -hmm. And we were able to get front row seats because my boyfriend at the time, his mother worked for Pan Am and she got, remember, good Pan Am. remember that? And it was, that was a dream. That was a dream. And we would all dream about, of course, meeting the Jackson five. Yes. And you, here you are. Beyond. Looking at right on magazine. Remember that? That's right, I mean, right I'm still on my age, but you know, it's just true. It's just, my gosh, it's, it's unreal. Um, there's just so many people that I'm, I'm like, you know, I, I think back to interviewing Angela Bassett and sitting there talking to her and I'm like, am I really talking to Angela Bassett? Okay. <laughs> and I have to just get the questions out there and, and just act like I'm her next door neighbor. Unbelievable. Now, how is Angela Bassett? She seems wonderful. Like wonderful. I, I, absolutely I, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, Tony Braxton, wonderful. Really? Yeah. Um, it's just my cousins told me that I should, you know, gather all my pictures and make like a coffee table book because you kind of forget and then you know it comes back to you. Um, but I, I've been blessed. I've really been blessed. Really, um, you really yeah. are. You know, when I, I talk about this all the time journaling our journey right journaling mm -hmm. same goes for your coffee table book and taking a look at what you've done it's really important to do that you know mm -hmm. because otherwise you're just working you're working towards i know you love what you do mm -hmm. but you're just working mm -hmm. taking a moment to mm -hmm. you know flip through a book or looking at yeah, a book or images or your journal to see what you've done because you've accomplished so much tracy and i'm thank so you super proud so have you. you thank you so super proud of you Thank and you. I, Same here. Thank you. I can't wait to see you. We we say this, but we've got to get together for lunch. Maybe I'll see you on the 19th. Okay. Yeah. Angelo's that sounds good. Event. But uh, Tracy, it's been magnificent, magnificent speaking with you. And uh, I can't wait to see the, the movie. Can't wait to see the movie. Will okay. you let me know what's coming? Yes. We can see yes. The preview? Yes. And I can send you a link. Okay. Private link. Okay. Awesome. Yay. And, and here and now, everybody, let's, you know, watch here and now. Right? Sundays at 12 on Channel 7. And you can always, always catch, catch it online. ABC7NY.com backslash here and now. Love it. Tracy, thank you so much for coming on the show. So Anytime. appreciate you. And, and I'll see you. I'll see you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>